All right, the last thing we have to talk about in our two body systems and the pulleys is we're going to look at the Fletcher's trolley. So the Fletcher's trolley is, well, it's not quite the Atwood's pulley. Basically what you have going on here is you still have a pulley. That's still very much central to the discussion. You're going to have a mass that's freely hanging, but you're also going to have this mass on a surface here. So this time the two masses aren't freely hanging over the pulley. One is freely hanging. One is going to be on the surface of some kind like a tabletop. Whether the tabletop has friction or it's frictionless, it's going to depend on the problem. Now for these questions here, there's two different ways you can calculate the acceleration. You can do it the same way we did with the Atwoods pulley by looking at the system as a whole. I will show that in a separate video. I'm going to show you the more formal way that we do the Atwoods pulley. But like I said, I'll show you the shortcut way. Or I won't call it a shortcut. I'll show you the way we do it looking at a system. So kind of with the Atwoods pulley, because we're going to be looking at the two masses individually, you're going to treat the direction of motion as positive for each mass separately. And this is really important. So we're going to draw a free body diagram for both of these masses. So this first mass here, I'm going to call that mass 1. This hanging mass, I'm going to call mass 2. So for mass 1, it's sitting on a tabletop and it's not moving vertically. So it's going to have a normal force acting up. I'm going to put a 1 there because we're referring to mass 1. We're going to have a force of gravity 1 acting down. And then there's going to be a force of tension in the string that's going to pull on this mass. Now that force of tension is going to come from this hanging block, but we can just label it as a force of tension. And that's all we need to do for that. Now for the second block, it's a bit less complicated. There's still a force of gravity acting down. So we're going to have this FG2 acting down. And it's accelerating downwards, or at least that's what we're assuming. So the force acting up has to be a little bit smaller. We're going to have a force of tension that's pulling back on this thing. So we're also going to have an FT whose magnitude is just a little bit smaller than FG2. This force of tension here and this force of tension here, these are the same forces of tension, and that's really important. And we still hold that assumption true, just like we did with the Atwoods pulley in any other two-body system question. The tension in the rope is going to be constant. And we're going to use that to our advantage. Now, I also said the direction of motion, call it positive for each block separately. So for the first block, since it's going to move to the right, for this block, we'll call right positive. For this block, since it's moving down, we're going to call down positive. And so we want to determine the magnitude of the acceleration for the 4 kilogram mass. Now, what we need to do is we need to set up net force equations for each block separately. So we're going to set up F net statements for each block individually. So I'm going to look, and we only care about the direction of motion. So I'm going to even put that here in direction of motion. Because if we're not in the direction of motion, we don't really care about that for now. When we start to actually have to calculate friction using coefficients of friction, we'll care about that. For the moment, we only want to look in the direction of motion. So for the first block, the net force acting in the direction of motion for this first block is going to be this FT. So what we're going to have here is that the net force on block 1 is equal to Ft. Or we could just say M1A equals Ft. That's all we have. So I got the mass 1 times the acceleration equals the force of tension. This equation, it'd be nice, but it doesn't do anything for me. I don't know acceleration and I don't know Ft. So I can't use that. I have one equation and two unknowns. We're going to need a second equation. So for the second equation, my net force acting on this, it's going to be my force of gravity 2 acting down. And then we have that plus this force of tension. Or what we can say is we could say M2A. This is going to be M2G 
plus ft. So we're going to have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, again, we have to be really mindful of direction in all this. And this is where things are going to get a little bit tricky and sometimes a little bit iffy. We don't want the force of tension. That is going to be a problem. So what we want to do is we want to actually combine both of these equations together. Now, you might see this as a little bit of a problem. Hang on for a moment. And in fact, how we want to approach this? Well, yeah, this might get a little bit complicated, but we have to be really mindful of something. So I'll explain that in a second. So we're going to add both equations together. So I'm going to have m1a equals ft, and then I'm going to have this m2a equals m2g plus ft. So we're going to add these together. Now we're just going to treat both sides of the equation as being distinct and separate. So I have this m1a plus m2a on the left side of the equal sign. And then I have this m2g. Now, I have these two force of tension terms, but we have to be really careful with them. And maybe this is where we want to label them slightly different, even though they're the same thing. We might want to just add these two together, but the problem is this force of tension from this, this is acting like a positive FT. So this is almost like plus FT because it's going in the positive direction. Whereas this force of tension due to the second block, it's acting upwards or it's acting against their direction of motion. So this is almost like a negative FT. So if we combine these two together, these are actually going to cancel one another out. These oppose one another. And that's the difficulty with doing these questions this way is that's not readily apparent. That's why I'm going to show you another way that doesn't consider the force of tension and hopefully that will help you out. So for the moment, if you're kind of looking at the force of tension being like, um, I don't know how you did that, I will give you a much better explanation for that in a little bit. So what we're left with here is we have this M1A plus M2A equals M2G. The good thing is I have all my acceleration terms on one side of the equation, so I can factor out A. So if I do that, I'm going to get A, then we're going to get this M1 plus M2, and then this is going to be equal to M2G. Well, good news is I can divide both sides by the total mass. So I'm going to get that the acceleration of this thing is M2G divided by the total mass. So my second is that hanging mass. I'm going to have this 9.81 meters per second squared. And then we're going to divide this by the total mass. So what we're going to get is we're going to get about 3.27 meters per second squared. Or for sig dig purposes, we're going to get about 3.3 meters per second squared. Now, it only asked for the magnitude, so I don't actually care about the direction. But just like the Atwood's pulley, both of these are going to accelerate in the same direction. Or sorry, these are going to accelerate the same rate. So this first block here, this four kilogram block, it's going to accelerate at about 3.3 meters per second squared to the right, while simultaneously this two kilogram block is going to accelerate downwards at 3.3 meters per second squared. So the last thing is we need to determine the magnitude of the tension in the string. This is the same as with the Atwood's pulley. With the Atwood's pulley, what we did is we picked one of the blocks and we analyzed the free body diagram for that. We're going to do the exact same thing here. And we're going to pick the second block. Or actually, you know what? The easiest thing to do, we don't even have to do that. Sorry, I got ahead of myself here. We have two equations. This one calculates the force of tension. This one here also calculates the force of tension. We have the acceleration. You can use either of these equations to determine the force of tension. Pick whichever one is easier or more simple. M1A equals FT is very simple relative to this. 
we're going to go with that one. So we're going to choose the simplest equation from A, or B rather. So we know that the magnitude of the force of tension, it's just M1 times that acceleration. So this mass 1 is 4 kilograms. We found that that unrounded value of the acceleration is 3.27 meters per second squared. So we're going to get that the magnitude of the force of tension in this string is about 13 newtons. If we had used this second equation here, we would have found FT, we would have found 13 newtons as well. This one though, we would have had to be a little bit more careful with the directions. But as I said, this is a bit of a more complex way of doing this. I will show you a simplified, or at least one that I think is a bit more simplified. I'll show you a simplified method on how to do this. And this is just like with the Atwoods pulley, we're going to look at the whole system.